one piece? Mm hmm Try it. Really good. In all my years as a licensed paramedic working on the street, not many acute illnesses are as scary as a severe allergic reaction. We have a fancy word to call that. It's called anaphylaxis, which is the body's reaction to something that is causing them to have a number of different symptoms that could lead to a life-threatening emergency. In this scenario, we're going to teach you what anaphylaxis is, what it's doing in the body, and then how we may be able to treat them until emergency medical services arrive. So what is anaphylaxis? Anaphylaxis is an allergic reaction where the body does a couple different things at the same exact time. While the blood vessels are dilating and becoming leaky, allowing fluid to leak out into the tissues of the body, decreasing the blood pressure, something else is tightening and it's the airways the bronchioles the alveoli sacs are filling with mucus and fluids and basically we have these two mechanisms working together to create a serious life-threatening problem so the signs that this person might be showing is not only the itchy the hives the scratchy the itchy throat the swollen tongue the swollen lips those are all kind of superficial as far as the outside of the body, but what is happening inside is what we hear most of the time, and that's difficulty breathing, wheezing, gasping for breath, and not able to get it in. This is caused by those bronchial constrictions as well as the fact that she might be feeling lightheaded and looking pale because her heart rate is trying to increase and she's also losing blood pressure. So these are some things that we're going to be aware of as we're dealing with this anaphylactic patient. Now in this scenario though, she was wise. She understands that she's having a problem and she told somebody who was a bystander to go get help. In this training scenario, she's already been prescribed epinephrine for these types of emergencies, but in this case, didn't know she had a food allergy. So her brother shared the, the candy bar with her. It might have had an allergen in it, obviously it did. And now she's reacting to it. So as soon as we could, we got to her EpiPen. A few points to think about here is we need to make sure that the date is still within the expiration range so that it's, it's good. We're going to pull the cap off, the safety cap, and it's important to remember that we grip it firmly in our hand, but we do not put a thumb over the needle area or over the back of the EpiPen. Now that this has been readied, I'm going to hand it to this victim who's now going to auto-inject. She puts it into her big muscle in her thigh and holds it there for three seconds. She now takes it out of her leg and lays it beside her. While she does that, she massages the leg and tries to get the, the medicine to absorb into that deep intermuscular injection. This training is based on the EpiPen brand, so if you use a different brand, make sure you follow that manufacturer's directions. Now, while we're letting that get into the system, if we have not already called 911, we should be. So if you have a phone, dial 911 and get emergency medical services on the way. If you don't have a phone, send somebody to go call 911 immediately. If there's a delay in emergency medical services of greater than five to 10 minutes and the patient actually has a second auto injector available, we can actually deliver a second auto injector if the signs and symptoms of her anaphylaxis have not improved. Now we're always gonna be monitoring this patient for an increased problem, maybe a loss of consciousness, increased difficulty of breathing, or respiratory arrest, and then eventually cardiac arrest. And we're gonna treat them accordingly while we wait for EMS to arrive. 